Hello there. So, last days I've been depressed, really depressed. Uh, and, well, what I usually do when I'm depressed and I get my quote unquote wage from my parents is I go thrifting. And today I got this. It's a Sony Trinitron, I have no clue what model. Uh, let's look at the back. There we go. KV M14E. And I got this for 15 bucks, complete with the remote. It works perfectly fine. I, th well, except for one problem, well, two problems actually. One of the filter caps on the power supply seems to be bad because the thing takes like 10 to 15 seconds to get a stable image and the other one is the solder joints on the on the SCART connector are well destroyed completely the solder joints themselves but I'm already well I already have my soldering iron right here ready for fixing that and besides that I well I took a look at it in the store and the geometry seems fine everything seems fine <clears throat> why I bought this uh, it mounts the same tube the same picture tube as my uh, Trinitron 1442 ESP which is the TV that I've been using uh, up until now to play retro games and all that and we too because it looks really good when connected via RGB so it mounts the same picture tube and I really love it now my 1442 ESP I had to modify it to get a 60 Hertz picture because it didn't have uh, vertical size compensation so a 60 Hertz picture would look uh, stretched out I had to modify that I had to add a hardware switch under this little door right here which is a lot easier to open by the way in the 1442 SP um, it was also missing the the program buttons but I didn't really care it, we don't have analog TV over here anymore so it's not like I use the tuner. This one also has, if I can get this open, this one also has a front AV input, which I guess it's nice for like connecting a camcorder or something. And a headphone jack, which is something I have missed on, on the other TV because I had to turn on my, I actually put uh, an auxiliary output on the back of of my old Trinitron so I could connect it to my stereo so I had it going from the auxiliary output into my stereo and back into the headphones with an extender which was like uh, 6 meters of cable luckily like all of the unamplified uh, cable was shielded so no quality loss there, at least not that I could notice with my cheapo cost Porta Pros. But yeah, I'm looking forward to fixing this guy, this little guy, and using it as my main TV. And also, if you're watching from Madrid, I might, I might give away the other TV because I don't want it to go to waste. Although the other one. This is why I'm replacing it in the first place. It's not just because, well, because I was depressed and that, that was just another factor. Um, it actually has a little problem with uh, horizontal synchronism. And I haven't been able to find the source of the problem. So you have to bang it on the side a couple times until it picks up and that's with RGB on composite sometimes it just the it just doesn't sync and it just won't sync for hours on end uh, doesn't matter if you turn it off turn it on whatever 
One thing that I do not like about this model, though, that I like, that I loved about uh, my 1442 ESP, is that the all the settings are digital on this one. So if I have to set the geometry or anything like that, I have to do it through the remote, and I have to do it through the service menu. Luckily, I was able to get the original remote, but. So uh, yeah, I just mm, there's nothing like uh, there's nothing like adjusting bots. There's nothing like adjusting bots in in a TV while looking at the at the picture. There's nothing like that. The other one it was all analog. This one has digital potentiometers. But what you gonna do? I mean. Uh, I guess uh, it's still everything, everything's still analog. So I'll spray some contact cleaner on the SCART connector and I will redo all the soldering joints in there and we'll see what we can do about that filter cap. You cannot see it, but under there, there's a big filter cap. I shouldn't be touching around here right now because I just turned it off but yeah it, it's just a matter of turning this thing putting it uh, like that and doing redoing all of these because this thing is pretty loose as you can tell so yeah well look at these these are just destroyed <laughs> these are just so cracked look at them they are just so cracked. So yeah, we'll we'll resolder that and see the results. I'll pull out my Mega Drive with the 240p uh, test suit to see well how it is, how this thing's doing in terms of geometry and linearity and all that, and we'll see if I can find how to enter the service menu on the internet well so far things aren't looking that good we have a little bit of distortion here doesn't the picture is rotated maybe just the joke being misaligned but what worries me is this this little green corner right here that's what I don't like that's a defect of the tube and I don't want it here so what I'm gonna do is another day I will I will swap the tube from my 1442p no 1442esp I will swap it into this thing because they mount the same tube and the problem in the other one is the chassis but yeah, as you can see, it is in Genesis mode, so 60 Hz, no problem whatsoever, it doesn't... You can change it into Mega Drive, 50 Hz, no problem, doesn't overscan, so it has automatic vertical correction. I wonder if it, if it also accepts NTSC signals through here or through the back, I wonder, I wonder. But yeah, I have to replace the tube on this thing, no big deal, it's just, well, it, it's literally disconnecting a socket and a wire, it's literally just disconnecting this from here, this socket, the high voltage wire, and the yoke, which goes right on there. So. Easy peasy. That though will have to be another day because I am running out of time. So, yeah. Till next time. Bye.